Welcome to PowerWiz. Have you ever needed to visualize complex relationships in your data? Whether it's IT infrastructure, social networks, or organizational hierarchies, the Network Graph Visual by PowerWiz makes it easy to map and analyze connections like never before. In this video, I'll take you through each and every setting that is available under the Advanced Settings tab. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create stunning interactive network graphs in Power BI. Let's get started. First, I'm going to show you how to import this visual from the app source. I'm going to click on these three ellipses and select get more visuals. Let's search for network graph and this is the visual. Let's select this and click on add. Let's add this visual to our report page. Let's start by adding in all the required fields into the category section. I'm going to bring in the location, device name and status in the category section and in the measure section I'm going to bring in the traffic volume. Once you've dragged in all the required fields here you'll see that the network graph is now populated. Let's quickly expand this particular visual so that you can see this better. Now let's head over to the advanced settings of this visual and take a look at each and every setting that is available here. The first tab that we have here is the link settings where you can choose the different link types that are available. We have the solid link types which is by default and you can you also have the dashed link type here when you click on apply we have the dashed link type now appearing on the visual. Let's go back into the link settings and then you have the dotted link type. And the next option that we have here is the link style. We have two different options. One is straight, which is by default. And then you also have the curved option here when you click on apply. And now you can see that our link style is now changed to curved. And the next option here is to display or hide the directional arrows. By default, the directional arrows are visible here. But if you would like to disable them, you can simply uncheck this box and click on apply. You will no longer see the directional arrows. You can also control the arrow color here and you can also change the size of the arrows when you click on apply you see bigger arrows now appearing on the visual and the next option here is the color type by default this is set to single but if you'd like to change them to a gradient you can do that and now when I click on apply you can see that the lines have now changed into gradient color let me change the link type to solid here so that you can see this better and you can see that the gradient color is applied to our links and then the next option here on the color type is by source when you click on apply you see that the source color is applied to the link and then you also have an option here to select by target when you click on apply the colors here changes based on the target you can also control the link opacity from here and also the width type whether you want a dynamic width type or you want a fixed width type you can change this to let's say 5 and then click on apply you now have the fixed width for all of these links now let's head over to the next section here which is node settings we have different options here under shape options we can choose the shape that you want to display you can control the shapes of all the nodes or you can control by a particular node let's head over to the all nodes first you can choose the different shapes that are available we have rectangle triangle circle which is by default rounded rectangle oval and square let's quickly change this to square here and click on apply you see that all of the nodes are now changed let's go back into node settings you can control the minimum node size and the maximum node size or if you want to apply the same node size for all the nodes you can do that as well and when you click on apply the same size is now applied to all the nodes the next option here is the border option you can enable border or you can turn off the border borders are no longer appearing now and if you want to enable the border options you can choose whether you want to apply the border only to the parent node or you want to apply the border to all the nodes you can control the border color as well if you don't want to use the same color as shape you can simply uncheck this and choose a color here of your choice maybe red and then click on apply you now have the red border appearing around the nodes and the next option here is the animation when you enable the animation which is enabled by default you have pop-up and highlight and when you toggle this off you will no longer see the animation but when you enable this and now when you hover over them they pop up and highlight you can choose the highlighting color as well let's say if you want to change the highlight color you can click on apply you can see that the highlight color is now changed and if you want to change the nodes by the levels you can do that as well let's head over to the by node level for level one let's say you want to have a circle for level two let's say you want to have a rounded rectangle and for level three let's say you want to have a square and now when you click on apply you see that we now have three different shapes that are available in our visual 
Now let's head over to the next section here which is icon under node settings. You will be able to choose the icon here of your choice. If you want to choose an icon instead of shape, you can do that. You can choose either by all nodes or by node level. Let's choose the icon here. Let us say for example, you want to display a trophy symbol here. You can simply click on apply and then click on apply. You now have trophies being displayed for all of the nodes and you can control them by node level as well so that for a particular node, you can choose the different icons that are available here. The rest of the options remain the same where you can control the size of the nodes, you can control the border options, the colors, the animation, etc. Likewise, we have the next option here which is images where you can add images of your choice. When I bring in the image field that I have here into the images section, you will see that I can now enable the images section here where you'll be able to choose the image field either by all nodes or by node level. You'll be able to choose the different fields that you can add in here and apply those nodes. For example, I can simply apply the first image here to all of the nodes. And the last option that we have here is to upload a silhouette image of your choice. Make sure the image size is less than 500 KB. You can either upload them for all all the nodes or you can upload by different node levels. Now let's head to the next section here which is labels. We have two different kinds of labels here, inside labels and outside labels. Let's look at the inside labels first. They are enabled by default. You can choose the different display type that is available. We have data value, we have percentage of total, category and data value, category, percentage of total, data value and percentage of total or you can choose all labels. When I choose all labels here and click on apply, you can see that we have three different fields that are available here. We have the category, we have the numbers and we have the grand total as well. Likewise, you can also add a custom label of your choice. You have to bring in the custom label field into the custom label section here and then you can display the custom label in this visual. You can choose to check this box which says show parent nodes in bold. When you do that, all of your parent nodes will appear in bold. And then we have the styling option like bold, italics or underline, auto text size, font color. You can choose the different font colors that are available. And then you, have, you can enable background for the text here. You can add shadow or background color from this particular section. Now let's head to the next tab here, which is outside labels. In the outside labels, you can choose what you want to display. For example, in the inside section, let me choose data value. In the outside section, let me choose category and then click on apply. You can see that within the node here, I'm able to display the value and the outside of the label, I'm able to display the category. Let's head to the next section here, which is data colors. We have various palettes here that are available. We have a single color that you can choose or you can apply your Power BI theme as well or you can choose the color here by category. You can choose by location. I have three different locations here. I can choose a color for every location. Likewise, if I choose device name, these are the different devices that I have available in my data set and you can choose a color here for every single device name. Likewise, we have a gradient option as well and you can enable mid color here as well and choose the colors of your choice and click on apply. Now the gradient is applied to the visual. Let's go back into data colors. We have sequential color palettes and these color palettes are also color blind safe. There are various options here for you to choose from. And then we also have diverging color palette, a qualitative color palette, and also by node level, you'll be able to choose the different colors that are available. Now let's head to the next section here, which is fill patterns. Let's enable fill pattern. You can either choose to enable the fill pattern here by node level or by category. Let's choose node level here. Let us say that for my level one nodes, I would like to display them in circles. And for level two, I would like to have squares. And for level three, I would like to have stars. And now I can simply click on apply. You you can see that the pattern is now applied to my visual. Now let's head to the next section which is ranking. I can enable ranking here and choose how I want to rank them. I can choose either to rank by device name, location or status. For example, let's choose device name. I have two different filter types option here. I have top end and bottom. I can enter the count here and then I also have an option here which says show remaining as others. Let me click on apply and now you can see that I have five top five device names that are available here. And what I've done here is if I go back into my node settings, you will see that for level one, which is device name, I've assigned the triangle as the shape. And you can quickly spot all of these five triangles here that are being displayed on this visual. And then I can also choose to display the remaining as others. I can simply toggle this on. I can add a suffix here, others plus category name or others plus count or both. Let's choose both here and choose the method as sum. 
and then click on apply. I now have the other node that is being added here and you can see the traffic volume as well. And when you hover over that, you will see that there are five different devices that are there under the others category. Likewise, we also have an option here where you can display the bottom end categories. Now let's head to the next section here, which is clusters. I want to identify all the device types or workstations that I have in my data set by location. If I simply bring in the location field into my clusters section, you will see that I've now identified all the switches or servers that are there in a particular location. I have three different clusters here identified automatically by simply dragging in the field into the clusters section. You can also control the background colors of these clusters. You can also control the stroke, the width, the and and you can also change the color here of the stroke. Let's say, for example, you want to have a, a red color stroke here. You can simply click on apply. You now have a red color stroke applied to your cluster. Now let's head to the next section here, which is relationship. Let's add in the status column that I have here into the relationship section. You can add different fields that you want. So what this does is, let me quickly zoom in into this. You can see that the Office A basically has workstation one and workstation two, and the relationship has added this particular status here, which says that this is an active, workstation and this is an inactive workstation. To give you another example of how the relationship works, you can see that we've added the relationships here. I have Tom Hanks here, which is basically saying that he has acted in Frost, in Apollo 13, and in the Da Vinci Code. Likewise, I have Apollo 13 here. When I highlight this, I'll be able to see who this is directed by, who has acted. You can see that we have multiple actors in here and it is directed by Ron Howard. And within the relationships, you'll be able to control the font family, the styling, the text size. If you want to increase the size here of this text, you can do so. You can change the text color here. Maybe if you want to display them in orange, you can do that and you can highlight them here. And let's go back here. You can also control the background color, the corner radius, you can enable border, etc. Now let's head to the next section here, which is conditional formatting. Let's click on add rule. You can apply the conditional formatting either to the measure or to the category. And under select type, you can choose the different options that are available here. You can either apply the conditional formatting to a particular node, which is status, location, or device name, or you can apply the conditional formatting to all the nodes. Let's select all here for now. And the traffic volume, this is the measure that we have. If this is less than, let us say, 1000, then I want this to appear in red and the text color in white and click on save. And you can see that anything that is less than 1000 is now highlighted in red. Now let's head to the next section here, which is toolbar. Before I start explaining what these options are, let me go back into the report and take you through the three different options that are available here. Number one, we have the zoom slider here where you can zoom in and then move around here if you would like to. And then I also have an option here where you can rearrange all. Let us say, for example, they are all moved out like this. You can move around the nodes and all of that. And then you when you click on refresh here, you, they will be rearranged here. And then you also have a log button. Let us say that once you have sort of uh, rearranged all of these nodes here and you want to lock them, you can simply click on this lock button. You will no longer be able to move these nodes now. Now let's go back into the advanced settings under toolbar. You now have an option where you can disable the zoom slider. Let us say that on the visual, you don't want to display the zoom slider. You can simply toggle this off. And then you also have various options here where you can control the colors. Let us say, for example, for active track, you want to change the color here to green, click on apply. And now for the active track, you can see that the color is appearing in green. Likewise, we have various options here that you can choose from. We also have the option here to disable the rearrange all. You can toggle the rearrange all option here and the lock and unlock option. You can also change the color. You can control the sizes as well. The next option here is the import export option. Let us say that you have once you have finalized the different settings and you want to export this so that you can use the same settings and apply into, into a new Power BI report or into a new visual, you can do that. You can simply head to the export button here, click on export, save this as a JSON file and come back into the import section and you can click on upload here and select the JSON file and click on import. The customized option that you have selected in a particular visual will get applied into your new visual. And we have some more options that are available here. The first option that we have here is the lasso tool. Let us say, for example, you want to highlight just two of these nodes here. You can simply select them 
and these two nodes will get highlighted. Likewise, we also have a reverse lasso. Let us say, for example, we want to deselect these two nodes here. And when you deselect them, you can see that the rest of the nodes are now highlighted. And we also have an option here where you can change this into a grid view where you'll be able to see the data in a tabular format. You will also be able to expand them and take a look at the hierarchical data as well. Some of the other options that we have available here are under the format settings here. We have the visual settings where you can toggle off the advanced settings icon that you see here, the grid view, lasso, reverse lasso. If you want to toggle them off, you can do so right from here. And under number formatting, you'll be able to add the decimal separator, thousand separator, decimal places that you want to display on the visual, percent decimal places, scaling display, prefix, suffix. Let us say, for example, you want to add a dollar sign as a prefix here. You can do that from here and dollar sign will now get added into the visual. You can also customize the scaling here for thousands, for millions, billions, trillions, etc. You also have an option here where you can add a footer. When you toggle this on, you'll be able to add a footer information here of your choice. You can add a text, you can add a web URL, you can also add a divider here. You can choose the divider color, thickness, text color, etc. And then the last option that we have here is the legend. When you toggle this on, you'll be able to see all the legend here. You can control the position of the legend, the, the title of the legend, the color, font size, etc. And there you have it, your very own interactive network graph in Power BI. Ready to uncover insights and wow your audience? From setup to customization, you are now equipped to visualize complex relationships like a pro. Ready to get started? Download the network graph visual today from App Source or our website. Link is in the description below.